It's definitely true for me that I have about like 50 unfinished projects that are running all the time and I constantly build like straight up stupid tech experiments and um, I have a, I, I'm really struggling with learning new technologies unless my job forces me to and given that I primarily build enterprise software, the technologies I learn are usually not the fun ones. It's not Rust, it's usually um, you know, PowerShell management tools, which is less exciting, less cool, uh, doesn't really make any splash on Hacker News or Reddit. It's like just less, less cool. And so we were doing the call for papers, and in comes the submission with the title that immediately captured me, which was um, when you think there's no time for learning additional coding. And I was like, yes, I do think that all the time. I don't think there's more time. So um, we brought her here from Greece. Please give it up for Eletheria, an app developer who's going to tell us how we can actually find the time to do some more coding. Hi, how are you? Yeah, nice. So my name is Eleftheria and I am coming from Greece. I am an app developer and you can connect with me on my social media or in my email. I'm very active on Twitter so feel free to find me there. Um, except of working as an app developer, I'm also a master's student and a content creator, which means I write articles, I try to publish them, I create YouTube videos, and also I really like to work with UX and UI, and my master's is more focused on that, and sometimes I'm freelancing also as a UX designer. So. What we're going to see today, uh, it's built up with three things. First of all, my coding journey, how I started to code, what did I learn, and then we will go to the main part, which is building a habit and why it's important to build a habit. Last but not least, we're going to talk about habit for me. Sorry, uh, we're going to talk about dealing with frustration and stress, as I think this is something that we all go through. All right, let's get started with my coding journey. And as I said, I'm coming from Greece and I went in a Polytechnical University, which means it was a five years university. I did a lot of maths, a lot of physics, a lot of electronics, but not a lot of coding. And I did also an internship. I decided to do that internship in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. And there, sorry, and there I started also to reading more articles in different uh, forums and publications. And I found one article that in the title it had something between the lines, 100 days of code. How many of you are familiar with 100 days of code? Okay, yeah, that's great. Um, I first read that article and it was written by the creator of that challenge named Alexander Calway. And he was saying that if you took part in this challenge, it will help you build a portfolio, a coding portfolio, and it will also help you build up your skills. And this is exactly what I wanted because I have to admit that my skills weren't that good. And my plan was simply to finish with that internship that it was going very fine, but then go back to Greece and find a job, which this was the hard part. So the next thing I know is challenge accepted. So I stick to um, a goal, I stick to a habit, and that was according to the challenge that I was coding for 100 days of code, at least for one hour, and then I would upload all my code in Twitter, and that would help me build up a portfolio. And the last thing was to use Twitter, and I would use the hashtag 100 days of code, and I would encourage their other people either to take part in or give them feedback in their project or ask feedback for my project, which was something really, really beneficial. And that's what I did. Uh, now, a lot of people, mainly on Twitter, started asking me, yes, but what do you code? Or if I want to take part in, what do I code? For me, it was kind of simple, because there is always something to learn, there is always something to build. You just need some sources, and you just need some inspiration, and that's it, then you have everything. So for sources, 
there are plenty of stuff out there. Uh, some of my favorite things are online educational platforms, and here I mean things such as Udemy, Udacity, FreeCodeCamp, and there, there is, of course, YouTube. You can find everything there, some uh, beginner's courses, some more advanced courses, but it's really everything. There are online communities like Slack channels, Discord channels, and again, everything. There are some coding challenges, and I will talk about that um, a bit later, that also give you a theme daily in your email. And in this theme, you can find some really cool information or uh, a video or something to learn. And also, there are magazines and books for me, uh, because I wanted to be a front-end developer. For example, I read a Loki and JavaScript, which was a really nice book. And as for inspiration, again, there is a ton of things out there. Uh, for me, some of my personal things to do, favorite uh, things to do are reading. So I read a lot of blogs and I browse different kinds of forums, and there is always plenty of stuff again there. there. You can follow your favorite publications on Twitter, on Medium, uh, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, just find them, stalk them, it's okay. And then, of course, go to meetups and attend to conferences, but I'm pretty sure that this is something that you already do because you are here. So, um, this is pretty much what I just said. And now, as for what did I learn and what were my first goals? My first goal was to be better at HTML, CSS, and then, of course, JavaScript. And then also starting using some more modern technologies, like a little bit of less, SaaS, and stuff like that. Remember that this was my initial steps, so I wasn't really sure what I was doing, but I was trying to learn something good there. And I was seeing other developers that they were all the time in the console and I wouldn't seeing like different tabs in the Chrome developer tools and I, I didn't know what exactly they were there but I knew that I had to learn them and last but not least I decided to learn a framework and I went with AngularJS now I know that that wasn't a very good uh, like option because you know AngularJS, uh, it's going to be deprecated for those of you who don't know that. And learn also a data visualization library, and I learned D3GS. That was actually a good choice because I got my first freelancing jobs doing uh, D3 development. So some examples of the things that I built. Because my first goal was to learn HTML and CSS, I took part in another challenge called Daily CSS Images. And in that challenge, for 50 days, I was getting an email with a theme that I had to code. This theme, I had on to build it only with HTML and CSS. So my first designs, I believe, are very simple. But as the days went through, I, again, I believe that my designs got a little bit better. Um, after that, I started working a little bit more with JavaScript and the inspiration behind, for example, this game, the tic-tac-toe game, is coming from FreeCodeComp, and this one is the same. I started to work a little bit with AngularJS, okay, and also working a little bit more with D3GS. And again, this is um, another thing. One of the latest challenges that I did, and I finished this challenge this summer, is the daily UI challenge. And in this challenge, for 100 days, you had to build a theme. You were getting the theme via an email again. And this uh, is the last project that I built. It was to replicate the daily UI website. And I decided to do it for mobile, since currently I'm working as an app developer. Uh, okay, so let's continue with the challenges that I did. And the first one was 100 days of code. I started it just one day before 2017. I guess I didn't have anything better to do that day, I don't know. And also, if you take a look on daily CSS images, it's on Valentine's Day. Again, I don't think I had anything better to do. But we can continue, okay. I did some other challenges as well. And, and, and as for that 100 days um, of YouTube, in this challenge for 100 days, I was uploading 
videos on YouTube. And the content of these videos were more like educational or tutorials or how-to videos. It was something really difficult because in one day you had to code something, you had to edit it, you had to publish it, but it was a nice learning um, experience. Okay, and the last one, which is daily UI. Now, another question that I was getting a lot, again, mainly through Twitter, was what motivates you or what helps you keep going. And for me, if you want to do something, just go out and do it. You really can. You just have to want it quite badly, and then you will succeed. You will do it. Another quote that I really like is, you are the average of the five people you are most associated with. And I know that there are some people maybe in this room that don't really like this quote, but for me it is kind of true, because like, look around you, you are near people that are motivated, that you are near people that want to succeed, you are near people that want to achieve something nice in life. And what did I gain through this challenge? 100 days of code and other challenges are stuff like I learned to be more optimistic and more grateful for the things and the people that I have near me. I met a lot of people with different backgrounds and different aspirations. And I also got better at time management, or at least that's what I want to believe. And this is something that we will talk uh, a little bit later as well. And of course, I traveled a lot. For example, I am here. All right, so in a few words, is it a good thing to take part in a challenge? For me, yes, it is. And if you want to learn, if you want to build something, then just go on, go with a challenge, or start doing something, but start. This is the very first step. Start doing things, start building things. And now let's keep going with our second part of the session, which is tips and techniques of habit formation. Another quote is, I'm not telling you it's going to be easy, I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. I'm not telling you coding is easy, or like staying at home and being with your laptop, it's easy. Of course, there are more funnier things to do in life, but if you want something, if you want to achieve something, then you have to do it. The first thing, if you're trying to form a habit, is that you're going to feel the resistance. Resistance is always there, and it always gets you. Try to do something good, and it's always there. Try to stay uh, fit or healthy, and it's always there. Like a cookie will be there, um, an excuse for not going in the gym will be there. There is always something there. But something that can really help is the power of limits. If you want to do something, then don't spray your efforts around. Focus on one thing and do that one thing. Try for consistency over volume. If you want to build something, if you want to build a website, don't just say that I will build that over the weekend. No, start building slowly, maybe every day for just one hour. Start building. And it's better to have just a little bit of free time rather than too much. And again, this is something that it's a little bit weird um, in a very first thought, but it's true. If you have a lot of time, you will say, okay, I will build that a little bit later, a little bit later, and a little bit later. But if you have a bunch of things to do, you will start doing things, and you will not leave them for later. Um, Another thing is track progress visually. This really helps. So take a calendar, take a notebook or something and start writing things. I know that this is something that it's, I don't know, I was reading all the time about keep a calendar, keep a notebook or something and I wasn't doing that. But as soon as I started doing it, I saw that it really helped me with my productivity. And another tip that I very recently learned is if you're keeping a to-do list or something, if you say it out loud that I'm, done for this project, then it also helps you more. So it's not actually only visually, but if you say it out loud, it also helps more. And uh, by the way, this is from my GitHub while I was doing the challenge 100 days of code. Now, another thing is stay away from toxic environment no matter what. Um, again, an example with dieting. If you're dieting, don't keep 
cookies near you. Instead, like try to have healthy options near you. Um, if you know you're going to get distracting very easily, then close all the tabs in your browser, close all the applications in your phone, uh, even like delete certain uh, apps from your phone or uninstall them, just do something. Another thing that really, really helps is set your phone to silent, okay? It's very simple, it's very, very simple, but keep it to silent or to airplane mode. Uh, keep it in another room, just do it, and you will see that your productivity is going really up. Um, uh, according to a survey that, again, I recently read, it said that if you get distracted by a bling or a peep from um, an application, you need 15 whole minutes to get back on track, and 15 minutes is a lot of time. Um, another thing is the bright line rules, and this says that it's better from getting to something general to something specific. So the more you specify what you want to achieve, the easier it's going to be for you to achieve it. Again, the example that I said earlier with building a website, it's too big to say that you're going to build a website. Instead, say, I'm going to do first, sorry, I'm going to first do the login, and in the login page, I'm going to do this and this and that. So be very, very specific. Uh, the more you define your goals, the easier it is going to be for you to succeed them. The Keystone habit says that it leads to the development of multiple good habits. So if you're starting doing something good, if you're starting seeing some good results, then it's going to be a lot easier for you to keep going on that direction. They say that you need 21 days to build a habit. I think it's a little bit more than 21 days, but if you start seeing all these good things, then keep doing them, because it means that you're doing something good. Claim back the time. A problem that a lot of people say all the time is that they don't have time. Okay, I get it, I know that. Sometimes I say that I don't have time, but really, you have time. We all have 24 hours. Now, how we are going to use these hours? From people to people, it's different, but we all have the same t amount of time. Be ruthless about what you have to learn. For example, I know that I'm a person that I want to learn a lot of things, a lot of things. All the time there is something in my mind that I want to learn or do. Be very ruthless and specific about what exactly you want to learn. And change only one, two things at a time. Again, for example, the New Year's resolution never works because you say that you're going to change uh, 10, 15 things. No, this is too much. You cannot change so quickly 10 to 15 things. If your old habits were like, let's say, bad things, then you, of course you cannot change them so quickly. Start from something and think not only the best case scenario, but also the worst case scenario. So what is it going to happen if you don't do this or if you don't do that? And also have a minimum start and, and from there you can always go more or top. So say for example that I would code or I would read a book at least for 20 minutes. So this is the minimum, at least 20 minutes. And from there you can always go on. Now um, another or a couple of advices that I'm not sure are very, uh, you don't see them very often, is keep a note to-do list, okay? So we already talked about the to-do list, but what about keeping a note to-do list? For me, that would be something like, don't spend too much time on Netflix or don't eat too much cookies, but for you, it can be something completely different. Keep a paper or keep a notebook or something and see that paper all the time, like have it in a sticky notes or something, but just see that thing all the time so you know what you have to do or not have to do. And another thing is analyze your day, but really, again, be ruthless and really analyze your day. See how much time you spend on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. See how much time you're spending for uh, coffee or for Netflix and re reflect on those things. Do you really need all those things? Or maybe not. Um, another thing is that commit publicly to something. 
this is something that I was a bit afraid at start, and I think that other people also afraid of because they're afraid of what's going on if they fail, of what or what's going on if they don't do something. But that exactly is the why you should commit to something publicly. Maybe no one will notice if you fail at something. Okay, in Twitter, for example, there are so many people. Maybe no one will notice if you don't use the hashtag 100 days of code or if you don't do something that you said you do. But because it will be publicly, you will be afraid that other people will notice that. So you will want to do something. Also, don't ignore people or situations. Don't say that I will go to that meetup tomorrow. Don't say that I will talk to that girl, that guy tomorrow. Don't postpone things. Just start doing. And another thing that can really help you if you want to learn a lot of things is that try to do two different things at the same time. So not two same things, but different things. For example, if you want to learn some new programming languages, then uh, you can go, for example, with Java and JavaScript, because it's exactly the opposite thing, but not JavaScript and Python, because it is the same thing. Uh, also, you can do something completely different, like coding and music, or code and cooking. There are a lot of things that you can do. And some other time concepts that can really help. The first one is the Pomodoro technique. This is something that I use a lot, and it helps me being, let's say, more motivated and feel good on myself that I did something valuable. For those of you who are not familiar with this technique, basically you set a timer for 20 minutes or 25 minutes, and you try to be as focused as you can in this 20 minutes framework and after that you can take maybe one to five minutes um, a break and after that continue with 20 or 25 minutes of really working and really being focused. Another thing is it's not exactly a time concept but it is um, like the Pareto's principle that says that 80% of your output is coming from 20% of your input. This is something that if you analyze, again, can really help you. If you focus on the things that you have to do, if you see the output of that, then you know where you have to focus. And let's keep moving with the third uh, part of this session, which is dealing with frustration and stress. Again, I will start with a quote that says, it's not the strongest of the species that survive, not the most intelligent, but the most responsive to change. And keep here the word responsive, because this is the key. All right, so let's start with dealing with problems at the workspace, because why not? We all been there. So think, is it only you that have that problem? And can you talk with someone? Can you talk with other colleagues? Can you maybe talk with ex-colleagues? You can track them uh, maybe in LinkedIn. And really try to talk with somebody if you have a problem. If you have a really big problem, then leave that workplace at no matter what. And another thing is dealing with Sometimes, as people, we feel that others are really smart or really clever or that we can never like touch them because they are so up. And I don't think that this is true, but when you start and you are in a new field, maybe you have that impression. So learn how other people started. Learn about um, other stories of successful people. And know that coding is complex. Know that coding is hard. And don't compare yourself to others. I think that this is one of the most important things. Each and any one of us is unique in their own style. So it's not only about coding, but it's also about your other skills. Remember how you first got your first job. Do you think that you got your first job because you were really good at coding and you knew everything? Maybe you thought that you know a lot of things, but now that you are in your current job, do you really feel like that? And dealing with yourself. Because believe it or not, one of the biggest problems is actually ourself. Don't judge yourself too hard. And it's okay to fail. From time to time you will fail, we all fail. So no matter what, just keep moving. No matter how many times you will fail, just 
keep moving. And it's better to loosen up some rules. It's better to say that I will not do maybe today this and this, but today you will come back and you will, and you will do better things. Remember, we all stuck from time to time, so don't be too hard on yourself. And, of course, take care of yourself. Eat, uh, shower, go to the gym, do all those basic things. I'm sure that a lot of, of you in this room, sometimes you forget to sleep, right? So, yeah. <laughs> uh, don't act like there is something wrong with you, because guess what? You're good as you are. There is anything bad with you. And even if you're coming from a different background, even if you didn't uh, go to a university with coding, even if your previous job was in HR, no matter what, like take all the advantages from your previous work and start building things now. That's it for me. Thank you very much. I hope that you liked my presentation. All right, any questions? I think one question I have is how you like, how you even have the stamina. I remember that when I first started to learn Node.js, I was a C-sharp developer and broke into Node.js. And I set myself the goal of like contributing a little thing to Ghost, blogging platform built on Node.js, every day for 30 days. Yeah. And by day 25, I was like, this is the, this is the worst. <laughs> but why? Wow, you were on day 25 and you said that you would do that until day 30. You just had five more days. Yeah, but honestly, some of the last PRs, I really phoned it in. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like today it's going to be documentation change. <laughs> Updated that year number. <laughs> Copyright 2020. <laughs> okay. No? Oh, this one. Uh, just a quick question about yeah. how you make notes and take notes, because you talked about keeping a log, for example. Sorry, how do you... sorry, I didn't hear you very oh, well. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so you talked about m keeping a log of the things that you're doing yeah. and you know, taking notes. I, I just wanted to hear your perspective. Well, what do you do to yeah. keep track of that? Uh, there are numerous apps that you can use, but personally, I have found that for myself, just pen and paper, it works the best because it's something simple and you always have pen and paper and you can have it always with you, either at work or at home. You can have it in front of you. So for me, the best thing is just pen and paper. And yes, yeah, sometimes like you can use an app to do the same thing, but I think going with something simple will work best. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, this isn't a question, but since no one else is asking questions, I wanted to say that I, I love the illustrations on the slides. Those are so cool. Sorry? I, I love the illustrations on your slides. Oh, okay, They're thank you very much. Awesome. <laughs>